Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, today what I want to show you is your first power generation. Uh, now obviously you might, you know, start off with like some uh, <coughs> steam powered engines or uh, Sterling, you know, to get your things running. But this is the direction you want to head, at least uh, to start with. Let me cover what I got here. First off, I have a Magma Crucible. That's from Thermal Expansion. Way to go guys, it's an awesome uh, mod. So with the Thermal Expansion, you can turn a lot of things into lava. Uh, the cheapest uh, is netherrack. Uh, it only costs 8,000 MJs uh, to produce a bucket. And uh, so you get the most uh, for power. And so, you know, a trip to the nether. You could do it with other things also, but this is the direction you want to head. Now, I've thrown one hopper on top, you know, just to, uh, to feed it up here. Remember, guys, I'm not showing recipes basically giving you the ideas where to go you can look up the recipes on it um, now initially you're gonna need to throw like a sterling or something uh, to get it going because the blue area here uh, asks a recent about halfway for it to start converting it into uh, lava once you get it going though and lava starts filling up your engines uh, you're good to go so coming back <clears throat> you have your magma crucible okay then you have uh, an output for it. In this case, uh, I'm using the uh, waterproof pipe. Uh, I'll show you another way to do it here in a second, uh, which I prefer. Uh, so the lava comes around, goes into your magmatic engines. Uh, I've got four of them set up here. You'll notice that uh, they're all full of lava, so they're cranking away. Uh, so the, that's the basic design. Lava comes out and fills your engines. Now, what we got here, in case you're a little confused, I could use gold conductive pipe uh, to feed my uh, my electricity, my build craft electricity, by the way. Uh, but what I'm doing, oh, look, I got one flipped the wrong way. Uh, but what uh, what you do want to do is uh, use instead the redstone energy conduits. Okay, again from thermal expansion, uh, these uh, will uh, carry all your uh, build craft power. Uh, and you don't have to worry about like with the uh, conductive pipes. Sometimes they'll fill up and they'll pop on you or something like that. Uh, these are much nicer. Plus, there's a couple advantages. You can, uh, now I'm using the Omni tool, but uh, let me show you, you can use a regular wrench. If you right click, see how it pops off. But what the cool thing is about when it pops off, it hangs onto that electricity. I think I've showed you that before. All right, so <clears throat> magma crucible, water uh, proof piping, into the magma engines coming out the conduits remember on the conduits orange is out uh, blue goes in okay so you remember I had this one uh, either wrench you know I had this one accidentally turned around like hey that's the wrong way so you got to point them out also you'll notice it's got kind of like an arrow that points out see arrow kind of pointing in all right so and then your uh, your power comes here uh, ultimately the, you're not going to get this right out of the gate uh, this is oops, let me back out and show you. This is the uh, redstone energy cell. Now I'm going to show you the, uh, <clears throat> sorry, show you the pattern on this. The reason that you want to get it as soon as you can is it's a giant battery. Okay, uh, this is your Buildcraft battery, but it takes a little bit. You got to have. A, you know, the, the liquid transposer, you got to have a magma crucible to create your molten redstone. You, you just get a magma crucible, just like we got over here. Uh, but instead of putting in netherrack, you put in redstone. Um, again, look up the recipes to make this. This is not going to get you out of the gate. This you can all do almost immediately right out of the gate, be able to make this. And just, you know, build your uh, powered furnaces and... Uh, pulverizers or whatever you want build craft wise off of it ultimately try and get a battery going okay just because again builds up stores it you know the benefits of batteries okay now what I wanted to show you there that's what you're gonna build ultimately you'll you know want to get a bank of them going maybe say you know eight or more so the math here is for each block of netherrack it takes 8,000 joules Minecraft jewels, MJs, okay, to make a bucket of lava. One bucket of lava in the mag magmatic engines produces 10,000, no, what is it? <laughs> yeah, 
uh, 18,000, uh, in other words, you get you get 1,000 extra, or no, 10,000 joules. Was that right? I better check my wiki on that again. Basic point is you get, uh, you have, I think it's, it's either 10,000 or 1,000 joules left over. I think it's only 1,000. Again, let me check my wiki. Don't take my word for it. You have excess, okay? It costs... It costs less to burn, turn that into lava than it comes out once it comes here. So you not only will you have enough to refill, you see how I have it piped back in over here. You know, you can then take your sterling offline, destroy it, whatever, once you get uh, the, the power built up here. Uh, and it's a self-feeding cycle, okay? All you have to do is keep the nether rack going, and you'll have enough to feed it and, of course, to generate out to run your machines. All right, here's the things I wanted to show you over here. <clears throat> you can use waterproof piping. That's typically how I start out. Uh, because to make this tubing, okay, which is the liquiduct, it requires that hardened glass, uh, which that's a little, uh, the, the hardened glass requires the induction smelter. Uh, do it, but just, you know, it's not out of the gate. You can get those going right out of the gate. All right, uh, again, I just wanted to show you how the, you can see the lava in there. It's kind of cool. Uh, of course, another magmatic engine right there. Uh, you know, same basic setup. This is ultimately what you want to do, is this kind instead of the piping. Uh, but that works also. All right, the other thing, the reason I got a quarry over here I wanted to show you, I told you with the uh, the, the batteries, uh, if I click on it, you see how it's a full charge. Uh, just kind of one of the cool things, you can pick it up. Remember, if you shift right click with your wrench, you can carry it around. And if you look at it on my action bar there, you'll see, it has full power. Now, I can plop that right there, and that, when I flip the switch here, sorry, right there, is going to start driving my quarry. Look how quick that goes. Now, the reason it's going so quick, I'm feeding my quarry 50 mil, uh, Minecraft jewels per tick. That's a lot, okay? And the quarries are, they will take whatever you, you give them. You will drain this battery in no time flat. If you got the power resources, fantastic. Typically, I back this maximum output off to either 5 or 10. Slow it down. Look at, that's 10. It's still buzzing away. Let me buddy, bump it down to 5. Uh, it's going to take a minute. It's got some in the buffer there before it starts slowing down a little bit. Uh, can't tell if it's slowing down. Now, I'm also in a flat world, uh, as you can see, so I'm not sure how deep my ground is. Uh, let me go ahead and just pick this right back up. You'll notice it's still on its buffer. But uh, that's what I wanted to show you, is you can carry these things around, drop them wherever you need, uh, and that's, that's so handy, so handy to have. See, ran out of its buffer. I like to keep one in my line at my main house, have another uh, buffering up as well so I can carry it around with me uh, to use it wherever I need. If I want to go, you know, do some piping of oil or, you know, whatever. Uh, ideas are, are endless. Now, on this setup, I told you I have a hopper here. If you're not familiar with the hoppers, let me move this out of the way. Uh, basically, it just lets you kind of feed it. You can stack multiple hoppers, okay? Assuming I can jump, okay? And, uh, you know, so you can have several buffers like this. And on top of that, you can have your piping with the chest, you know, red engine to, uh, to pipe it down, have maybe an obsidian pipe to catch anything that flows off for the circulating. I personally found two, three hoppers filled with netherrack, maybe have a chest off to the side with some netherrack. I just come and I feed it once in a while. Um, that seems to take care of my needs. It's easier than having to do the piping once, once in a while. That just gets annoying uh, when it starts spitting it out when it doesn't need it and that kind of thing. Uh, all right, so quick review, magma crucible, waterproof pipe, <clears throat> magmatic engine. You can use gold conductive, uh, but I strongly recommend getting to the redstone energy conduits pretty quick. Uh, but you can do it with the gold conductive. Uh, feed it back in and also feed it out to your machines. Or again, keep that battery in line uh, as soon as you can. And bada boom, there is your unassisted continuous power supply for build craft engines also nice uh, nice little side note here 
uh, once you get this going, if you want to do the same thing for your industrial craft, uh, just take this lava out over here, put your uh, your geothermals on here, start feeding it for that. Uh, now, you might need a couple magma crucibles to keep up with a bunch of them. Uh, but, uh, you know, the magma crucibles, uh, they actually, they're really pretty, pretty inexpensive to make. I don't normally show you the uh, uh, recipes because, again, you can look them up. Um, doo -doo -doo, where is it? And this is the other reason I don't do it. There it is. Uh, so, really, all you're going to need, one gold, a couple red, okay, and uh, nether brick. Okay, you're already going to the nether for the uh, nether rack. Get some nether brick and a bucket, and you're uh, you're good to go. Uh, that's the magma crucible, wonderful thing. All right, guys, I'll wrap it up there. Went a little longer, a little repeating. Uh, see you next time. Thanks.